Hello everyone and welcome to the first video from the series of build archetypes. In this one I will be teaching you how to properly build a rogue. It doesn't mean that it's only gonna be specifically the rogue class but we also gonna go into the other agile type characters that you can build in Baldur's Gate. So your rangers, your rogues, your bards, we're gonna talk about all of them and I'm gonna try to steer you in the right direction how to properly make a character like that. We will be going through the very beginning of character creation of useful ability scores and other basic basics that you should know, but later on I will also talk about useful feats that you should pick up because there were actually newly announced feats recently and I will include them in this video because there are some very useful ones to take as a rogue and at the end we will also talk about some multiclassing and how you can branch out as your roguelike character to perhaps be a bit more of a, a hybrid guy. So being an agile roguelike character does not limit us to being a rogue. We can also make a very good case for a ranger build, for a fighter, even for a barbarian bard or the upcoming mom is also a very good archetype for what we're doing today. We should first of all look at the ability scores and most importantly dexterity. Dexterity we want to raise to at least 16 but you should also consider 17 because with some items in the game you can easily get it to 18 and then have a plus 4 to damage and attacks which is very important for us but also on level 4 we have some useful feats to pick from which some of them actually rises our dexterity by 1 also with some other benefits that it's gonna give, give it to us but we also can choose to increase two of our ability scores by one or one of them by two so you can even go all the way to 19. Just remember that it doesn't matter if you have 18 or 19 score in this case or for example 15 or 17 because we actually get our damage and attack improved only by the intervals of plus two ability score. So for example we want to go from 17 to 18 as fast as possible then from 18 to 20 because 19 doesn't really do anything for us. You should also consider to raise your constitution score a little bit because despite us wanting to remain in the shadows and being nimble as possible we should increase our constitution just in case of those moments where we cannot avoid damage and we want to have a bit more of it because constitution of course defines our hit points so it is important to have a decent score here. The third score that is good to focus on is wisdom because it actually saves us from a lot of spells because a lot of spell checks are decided on the wisdom score so it's also good to have a decent score here as well. Intelligence also affects a lot of our skill checks especially in conversations and different things that we will discover in the world if you are a rogue specifically you are pretty good in that so you don't need a very high score and overall we will neglect intelligence in most cases for the most part but it is good to have it at least 10 or 12 it is it will just make your life easier in the game with all the various checks that you're gonna have throughout the whole Baldur's Gate 3. Strength and charisma are usually our least useful stats unless you play a college of swords bard for example and of course you want your charisma to be a bit higher for your spell casting abilities I mean actually a lot higher uh, but in most cases if we focus on being just a melee menace and just attack from the shadows stuff like that and it's not gonna be a bard specifically then we neglect those scores. They start out with the simple weapon and hand crossbow proficiency right away so you don't have to potentially multi-class to a fighter in order to get your preferred weapon. Sneak attack makes you deal more damage when you have advantage on the target so it is your priority to get that advantage against foes that you're gonna be fighting against. It applies to both ranged and melee attacks which is great. Alongside the bard they make the best skill monkeys in the game which means they are proficient in a bunch of different skills that can be handy to get out of various situations. At level 3 you will get to choose a subclass between the arcane trickster and the thief. The thief is more suited for what we're doing today mostly because of the fast hand feature which makes you gain an additional bonus action means you can use it for a bunch of different things in the game when you're gonna be in the combat. For example it's gonna let you use two offhand attacks in a single turn. But thanks to this feature you can also do a bunch of different things like maybe just attack once with your offhand and then for example disengage so you can get to safety. Also it is important to note that all classes except for rogue will have stealth as an action so that buffs rogues significantly. Currently in early access stealth can be used by anyone as bonus action but it will be exclusive to rogues on release so it is something very important to keep in mind. Because of this feature that is actually stronger in Baldur's Gate 3 than in the 5th edition player's handbook I think Thief will be a staple for many builds to come. Now we come to the Assassin who I think will be a very popular pick as well just because of the fact of the level 3 ability which is Assassinate. It will allow you to have advantage on attack rolls against any creature that hasn't taken a turn in combat yet. In addition any hit you score against a creature that is surprised is a critical hit. So if you're gonna hide in shadows before the start of combat and you'll be able to surprise your opponent you're just gonna do a bunch of damage right 
right away on the first turn. I also think that Larian will buff assassins quite a bit in Baldur's Gate 3 because they are a bit underwhelming from the mechanical standpoints in 5th edition D&D tabletop, which will also make them great candidates for multi-classing, for example with a Gloomstalker, but more on that later. On level 4 you will have to make a decision between picking a new feat or an ability score improvement, which I mentioned before. Just make sure that if you're gonna do the ability score improvement that you will increase your score to an even number so you get that plus one plus one to attack and damage rolls and also consider your second ability score what is what is it gonna be because you want to for example have this wisdom up to 14 so you're more defensive towards uh, spell attacks but overall you want to probably take plus two if you take this option and make sure that it's an even number even higher for example 20 dexterity which would be amazing but you have also a choice of picking a feat and here we have some cool options for example if your roguelike character is focusing on wielding two melee weapons then consider dual wielder which gives you plus one bonus to armor class while wielding a melee weapon in each hand you will also be able to use two weapon fighting even if your weapons aren't light drist style so that means that you can for example wield now the two long swords and still have your bonuses from agile weapons which is pretty cool and opens up some build possibilities if you are going the range route however consider the newly announced sharpshooter which is similar to great weapon fighting as you take uh, more or less 25 percent penalty to attack rolls at minus five but you get a whooping plus 10 damage I'm not sure if crossbow expert will be in the game, but if it will be, then aside from the fact that it will lock you into using crossbows from now on, will let you shoot without disadvantage even if an enemy is right next to you, which is very useful because you won't have to switch to a melee weapon if you are focused on range, then you can shoot them right in the face when they are next to you. A very useful feat to consider as a ranged character. Next up is the ranger, who I also think will be a staple in many roguelike builds. He gets martial weapon proficiency right away, which is great if you want to use those longbows or for example long swords or some other weapon other than the ones that we already had available as a rogue. Natural Explorer is always nice to have, especially Wasteland Wanderer Fire, which makes you take half damage from fire, which is always handy. We can also pick our favorite enemy, which can be handy in certain situations. What's different in a ranger comparing to your classic roguish character is that you want to have your wisdom at 14, so you get more spell slots as you level up, and also your spellcasting ability is a bit better. On level 2 you will get to pick a fighting style as a ranger, you will most likely want to go with the archer or two weapon fighting if you decide to equip those two weapons. And on level 3 you will also get to decide your subclass. However, currently on early access we don't have access to the possibly strongest subclass of the ranger, which is the Gloomstalker. Gloomstalker will almost for sure be the strongest subclass for a rogue type character because it has a lot of useful tricks up his sleeve with hiding in the shadows and also having a great initiative and also doing more damage on the first turn that you enter combat. For example, you will be able to add a dice roll to your first attack roll as you start out so this is something great to have and it is just perfectly suited for a rogue type character and i think a lot of builds will incorporate the gloom stalker in their roguelike builds now if you want to incorporate a bit of charisma and music into your roguelike build then the bard is the way to go but you will have to put a lot of points in charisma as well just to have your spell casting up and be able to have more spell slots it would be the way to go of course if you want to be a bit more of a support type roguelike character that not only strikes from the shadows but also can help your allies from them as well. As a bard if you will decide to do damage from long range this is not a problem because we have hand crossbows as well available to us right away and also short bows and also you're obviously gonna want to pump this char charisma quite a bit to at least 16 so we get more spell slots and more spell power which will be useful for a lot of spells if you decide to go more towards a gish like rogue character. Most likely the most viable subclass of the bard for a rogue like character of course will be the college of swords because we will get additional attack on level 6 we're gonna get a bunch of flourishes that can help us both offensively and defensively and it can make for some cool hybrid rogue and caster characters. Now when the monk will become available in the game I think it's safe to say that the shadow subclass will be the most viable for our roguelike archetype. You will still want to pump dexterity but also wisdom will be very important to us which will raise our AC which is armor class thanks to our unarmored defense feature. Shadow monks will be our ninja like characters and we will be able to cast spells like darkness, dark vision, pass without trace or silence starting on level 2 by spending some of our key points. Also on level 6 we will most likely get shadow step which will let us step into the shadows 
and possibly reposition ourselves to make us even more mobile in combat. I think it will be a really cool class to play if you want to cosplay a ninja in Baldur's Gate 3. And now let us go through some builds and potential great multiclassing options for our roguish build. Starting with the Gloomstalker Fighter Assassin Rogue Multiclass. This multiclass will have some great synergies in Baldur's Gate 3, because you are going to combine the great initiative from Gloomstalker and Assassin, along with additional bonus damage from both of those classes. Gloomstalker Wisdom adding a bonus to your initiative rolls, and if you start the combat from stealth, you will be critically striking your enemies right away and doing additional damage thanks to the Gloomstalker's ability. And on top of that, if you add two fighters levels into the mix, you get Action Surge, which will give you another attack once per combat, so after you get five levels in Ranger and unlock your second attack, potentially you can be having an opening of seven attacks on the first turn. So as you can tell, that does sound pretty badass, but you have to keep in mind that after the first turn, you're gonna win down quite a bit, and you're not gonna have another a great a turn like that after the next combat, but still, you're gonna be able to have your stealth abilities, you're still gonna do formidable damage, and you're gonna be a very powerful combination of classes. When it comes to which class you want to pick first, and how many levels you want to pick, it is a bit up to you, and also we have to wait for the actual Gloomstalker class to come into the game to see what the features will be, and also how the Assassin's gonna have his abilities implemented in Baldur's Gate 3, but if I had to guess, I would go probably Gloomstalker 5 first, so 5 levels into the Ranger Gloomstalker, to get this additional attack, and then go to the Assassin to get the Assassinate on level 3, so we can get into our crit action, and then add the 2 levels of Fighter on top of it, so you get Action Surge, and you're just gonna be a complete powerhouse. But it can be even better, potentially, depending how Larian's gonna Im implement those 2 subclasses. Another somewhat unconventional build could be the Barbarian Rogue. You obviously won't be your typical assassin, but more of a shouting, angry, street fighting bully that relies on Barbarian's reckless attack that you're gonna get on level 2 in order to trigger your own sneak attack on the target, because it will give you advantage on your attacks. You can even go further to grab the Berserker subclass and have Frenzy as a bonus attack, which combined with the Thief subclass feature Fast Hands will let you have an additional bonus action, which you can turn into, into using another Frenzy attack, which does sound like a lot of attacks. It is important to note that in this build you might want to go the strength variant and use a rapier for example, so utilize your rage bonuses even further. You will also most likely want to start out as a barbarian to get that medium armor proficiency. When it comes to the level spread of the barbarian rogue, most people will go 2 into barbarian, you will start out as a barbarian, and then go 10 levels into rogue to grab all the rogue goodies. Most people do this because you're gonna get the reckless attack on level 2 right away, which is very handy, but you could go to level 3 as mentioned before and grab that frenzy and have have some multiple attack action going on right away. Now let's theory craft a little bit about our upcoming monk class and what class can pair well with the monk in order to create a cool thief-like ninja character. So the example I have for you is grabbing the three levels of thief, so we grab that bonus action from the rogue, and then going uh, six levels of monk for shadow step, shadow monk of course, and then two levels of fighter in order to get that juicy action surge. It also pairs well if you want to make an archer character, and it can just be a very good combination combination that not only attacks from stealth, gets some darkness goodies and stuff you can do to feel like a ninja, but also be pretty powerful. Alternatively, you could go three levels into Ranger for the Gloomstalker subclass, and then go Way of Shadow, and then transition into the Fighter. It would be probably a pretty versatile combination, and also potentially do even more damage than the Thief variant. Ranger also synergizes nicely with the Monk, because they both use Wisdom for a lot of stuff. For example, the Gloomstalker gonna add his Wisdom to his initiative rolls, which means you're gonna be able to go faster in combat, which is very useful to have. And then you can finish the build off with Fighter, which gonna let you get that amazing action surge, which will just let you do even more stuff in combat. And that concludes our Rogue Archetypes video. I hope you will find it at least a little bit helpful in creating your perfect sneaky or street fighter like character. Let me know what you think and what do you want to see next. Should I continue the series with fighter and caster archetypes, or perhaps should I focus on something else? Also, thank you so very much for watching my videos. In the last upload, I mentioned how I'm not partnered with YouTube yet. Well, thanks to all of you, I just got approved into the program today, which I just can't believe already happened. I wouldn't be able to put so much time into this channel if it wasn't for the amazing reception all of you gave me, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for making my day a little bit brighter, because I love this game and this community, and I am looking forward to contributing to it even more. I hope you will enjoy Baldur's Gate 3 and other RPGs with me, don't forget to check out my livestream at Twitch TV Kenra, and I'll see you again very soon.